Welcome to the OBM Podcast. This is a platform where awareness, new perspectives, healing, and transparent conversations take place. Every mom has a motherhood journey that is unique, yet no mom is alone. So sit back, relax, open your minds, and steady your hearts to hear a mom's journey through motherhood. Hey, sister friends, welcome to another episode of the OBM podcast. Today, you know, we have an amazing mom. Her name is Uniqua, and she is here to share her story. Y'all wave to her, say, hey, girl. Um, She is here to share her story of motherhood, okay? But before we get into that, we want to know who Uniqua is, because she is an, an individual in herself before any other title that she has. So, Uniqua, can you kind of tell us who you are? Tell us about yourself. Okay, well, (laughs) we've already established that I'm a mother. You may hear some baby noises. Um, But aside from that, I am an entrepreneur. I am a blogger and a content creator. So right now, different phases of life look different. So right now, this is the space that I'm stepping into and taking up. Okay, good. I love it. I love it. Can you tell us what you like to do? What are some things that are fun for you? Okay. So I kind of, my motherhood journey, it falls more under like the holistic category. So I like doing, I guess like crunchy things like farmers markets and I like making things like um like playing with herbs and herbal concoctions I like cooking and I like exercising I'm actually a certified personal trainer um and I enjoy doing that so anything anything that contributes to like my health and wellness those are literally hobbies for me Okay, good, good, good. I love that. So if we are going to talk about you, of course, we hear some sounds in the background, that precious baby, you are a mother. So we want to know that those babies are part of you. So can you kind of share your um, journey into motherhood? Kind of share that with us if you can. Sure. So I have two children and I have a bonus baby. The oldest is three years old. She'll be four in September and my youngest is six months. So the entry, I guess I will start at when I first became a mother. I was 22, 22, either when I got pregnant or when I had the baby. 22 was like the pivotal year and um. I honestly, I just started feeling like an adult. I just started like calling myself a grown up. So back then, uh, three years ago now, I felt very mature enough to take care of my child, but also immature in the sense that like I still want my mom to handle things for me. So it really caused me to kind of not necessarily grow up because I've been I've been pretty mature I left home pretty early being in the military so not necessarily causing me to mature faster but just stepping into who I am as a person because now I am not only representing myself but I have a little person who's watching me and who's gonna pull from me. So now it's time to like really make sure that the person that I am showcasing myself as is somebody that I would be proud of and that I would be honored if my if my child were to mirror me. Okay, so you share that you you so your first baby, you had your first baby while you were in the military? Yes. Okay, please share. Please share that with us. That that journey with us if you can. Okay, yeah. So for anyone who is like familiar with the military lifestyle, whether you are in the military, (laughs) sorry, (laughs) whether you're in the military or maybe you are a spouse, I'm going to pick him up (laughs) because he obviously wants to. 
be on the show. So, hey man, oh he's so cute. Well, don't look at that light. <laughs> oh, is that? Is that the sun? Um, so the military has its own kind of culture and being pregnant in the military, it's not like, I know the movies kind of make the military look like a thing that it actually mm -hmm. isn't. Mm -hmm. but, um, my experience, I got pregnant on my second deployment. So I did not know my fiance now, I did not know him very well at all when we got pregnant. So that was a whole roller coaster in itself. Like um, deployments are usually anywhere from six months to a year long, <laughs> which for me, it wasn't necessarily ideal to get pregnant in such a short time span. Um, but what I did know was that I was pregnant and I was responsible <laughs> or we were responsible, but I was taking, you know, um, accountability for my part in it. And I knew that with the support, I'm saying this, but th after coaching from my support system, I found that with the support that I had and just who I am as a person, that I would be a great mom. It just took a little bit of a pivot because it was, it was kind of, very unexpected that's all right <laughs> but, um so moving forward after the deployment i had my daughter about probably about four months after i left the deployment and returned to my home base which was in south dakota and um i'm from louisiana originally okay. so being in south dakota i'm completely isolated from any family that mm -hmm. I have. So my support system at the time looked like my close group of friends. And my mom came down for uh, quite some time after I had the baby. She mm -hmm. came down and she helped me out. Uh, my fiance, he came down whenever he could because he was also in the military. So we're in different places. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was challenging. But as long as I had the support, I felt very affirmed you know in nice. my position as a mother now when it came time that my mom had to leave and go back to Louisiana because she has a life there mm -hmm. and my fiance he was working on getting out of the military at the time so that's a whole process and then my friends they're my friends but they're mm -hmm. not like my baby's daddy so they could only you know I could only expect so much from them and when it came time for everybody to kind of do their own thing is when I realized that I did not want to stay in South Dakota without my support. So I decided to move back home. One thing that they do in the military when you have a baby or when you get pregnant, you have up to a year after you've given birth to separate, even if you're coming mm. Up yet, so they give you a time to if you want to leave and go home, you you don't take. I mean, you don't take any extra benefits with you. It's mm -hmm. but it is an opportunity to raise your family in the way that you see fit or what works best for you. And so that's what I did. I went back home to kind of pivot and refocus and just figure out what my life is going to look like now since there has been quite a drastic change and mm -hmm. um let's see that's when I started my entrepreneurial journey instead okay. of um yeah so I went from the military usually the military when you have a baby that is more reason to stay in because you make more money the baby is covered with the benefits that you mm, get or okay covered. so usually one would stay in after an unexpected pregnancy mm -hmm. but that staying in the military even before getting pregnant was not something that I wanted to do gotcha. so I kind of fast to that instead of 
<laughs> giving giving into what would be easier for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did what I actually wanted to do which was get out <laughs> instead of re-enlisting <laughs> and I don't regret any of it I don't regret joining but I also don't regret getting out because now I feel like being a mother on top of separating from the military um really allowed me to branch out and discover more things that that make, that make me feel so loud <laughs> more things that make me feel closer to myself as opposed to just doing what was more convenient and what would have been easier which is staying in well I like to hear this part of your story because I don't think I, yeah, I probably don't know of a a mom as of right now. Well, now I do, but a mom that it was in the military, but also had her baby and just knowing the rules and regulations. And when it comes to being in the military and having babies and things like that, I I never knew. So it's cool to kind of see your journey and hear your journey with your first baby and how you, you know, willingly left and things like that and you had your baby in Louisiana correct I had her in South Dakota I left after my maternity leave was uh, pretty okay much. okay mm-hmm. so you had her in South Dakota did was this a hospital birth uh how how was her labor and delivery this was a home birth it was a water birth at home and um I decided, I had decided long before even getting pregnant that I wanted to do a home, a water birth at home. So when I got pregnant, it was like, all right, I know what, I know how I want to do this. Um, it was amazing. It, I would do it again and I did do it again. So that's just how much I, I enjoyed it over, over having to do it in the hospital setting. Can you share what was so amazing about that experience? Yes, of course, of course. So let's get this toy. Okay. Um, it was very empowering. I got to really see my body work. Mm. Um, so the pregnancy in itself, I got a lot closer to like um to myself and understanding my body Mm -hmm. especially because the relationship between my baby in me and Mm -hmm. what I'm doing I could really see the correlation so aside from you know when we start exercising or maybe we start adopting a certain routine you can see how your mind body and spirit connects to whatever it is that you're doing so being it, it was just kind of like that times a lot because now it's like your body you can ignore sometimes when you want to do what you want to do like for people who are lactose intolerant but they're not giving up ice cream you can ignore <laughs> yeah. yeah you can ignore those signals but when there is a baby inside it's like it's not just me who I'm doing things for and so it kind of I guess um exaggerated what I was already uh knowledgeable of about Mm -hmm. my body and how I was caring for it so that was a whole relationship in a dance in itself the pregnancy and then moving forward to the actual labor I did a lot of learning YouTube research about just what to expect. I had a doula there and I had a midwife and it was just really empowering to not only learn how the body works through labor Mm -hmm. and how your baby work through labor together, but actually being able to see it in action and feel it in action since I didn't do any um, epidural or anything so I felt just about every single part of the labor and wow. the fact that I got through it yeah go you girl yeah go that, you. That, 
best feeling, yeah. Good, good. So I wanted to ask two questions based on what you said. You said you, um, the first one, you said that you did it twice. So mm-hmm. you did it with your first and your second. So the first question I have for you is being in the military with your first baby. I mean, from my understanding, you still, the baby was, the labor and delivery were covered um, by the military and things like that. And no, okay, we have to talk about this. How how was it having your firstborn in um, South Dakota, in the military, and your second born, where was he born? He was born here in Florida. He was born in Florida, mm-hmm. but also without you being in the military can you kind of share the difference in the uh labor and delivery and you said the military didn't cover it so i just want to hear about this part yeah so the military does usually cover um regular hospital birth and honestly every base is different so say you have you're on a base that has a hospital and maybe that hospital has um, a water birth facility, chances are you will be covered. But me being in South Dakota, the bases, you can kind of tell where a bigger, more booming base will be just based on what you know about the world and especially the, the states where we live. So somewhere like South Dakota, chances are you probably don't know anyone. And if you do, it may be one person from South Dakota, unless you're from South Dakota. And you probably never had a desire to visit. And so taking what you know about that, you can imagine South Dakota, the base is not very built up and it's not a place that they are prepared for an influx of people to want to come to. So it was very basic. And so they did, they only had a clinic, they didn't have, hospital and um even the the home birthing scene was not extremely saturated so with the insurance that the military provides you could try to see if there's someone that accepts it but because that the space is just not it doesn't really go together so mm-hmm. i ended up having to pay for my midwife and my doula out of pocket mm-hmm. Um, and it, it worked out because I had just come from a deployment where I made more Mm. money Mm. and I think my taxes also just happened to, to hit in the time where I would be able to, to cover it myself since that's something that I wanted to do. Mm. Um, Funny part now, when I had my son, just mm-hmm. last year, um, Medicaid actually covered that home birth. So wow. I was thinking, I would at first I thought the military would definitely cover this, and I was thinking Medicaid definitely will not cover this. And but it was like the yeah. opposite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that that blows my mind because I would think you're still pregnant, you're still in the military. And they cover you from head to toe, honey. Like, oh, you can't, you don't have the, I I didn't know that you still, your insurance had to, uh, you had to be in network for like Mm -hmm. a midwife. Like I, that still blows my mind that, I mean, I can see how the system works though. It's just like, so y'all don't want me to try the natural way. You want me to go get the medicine. You want me to go this way. Cool. If you do, and if you choose to, or if you, um have to because of your health that's cool but I don't like how they make you have to cover it yourself if you want to go on the natural state you know being really in this country being healthy and being um yeah I just stick with that being healthy costs a lot of money yeah you know going the healthy way costs a lot of money that's why many of us are having a hard time choosing good foods because it's not easy to find those foods, number one. And number two, it's more expensive, mm-hmm. you know? And so I, it kind of blows my mind. And just, and that was just a little 
back in but just to hear you saying military and medicaid is like switched in your mind the military didn't pay for it but medicaid did pay for a home birth that kind of blows my mind that that really yeah. does but I, I i i am thankful for medicaid to take care of this 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 home birth for sure but keep yeah. going keep going so how so we see the difference in um coverage um how was was the experience different because you did say that you were at two different ages so what was what was the age what were the ages you said 22 well you didn't say it but I know you said your first kid was 22 and you're you're you just had this um last baby right here what's the age difference how was that experience different for you based on your age Mm -hmm. okay um very very different so Mm -hmm. it's they are three years apart maybe like three and a half years apart the first one my mom was there um the second one she wasn't but the first one for me to be as successful as I was with that home birth I think that I needed my mom to be there Mm. because I was, I was, I was very young. Like (laughs) I was, um, I just, I, I was an adult, you know, I was supporting myself. I was paying my bills and stuff, but that just wasn't enough to make me feel grown. Like, Mm. (laughs) like I had it all together. (laughs) Girl. Something missing. And, um, so having my mom there, I can remember there was a period in the labor where, and this is very early labor, mm-hmm. like when I didn't know what contractions felt like, and I wasn't even sure if what I was feeling was contractions. There was a period very early on where I was crying, like, it's supposed to get worse than this. Like, <laughs> there's uh... more. Yeah. And. Mm-hmm. It took my mom to like help me to recenter and refocus on what I wanted to do, what I said I wanted to do. Um, so she was there the whole time. She was doing even um, postpartum, like she was cooking a lot. She was, I don't even remember the night shifts really. Wow. Um, after Congratulations, having my- honey. <laughs> Just that much. Yeah. Mm. Now this last one, I remember. <laughs> I remember <laughs> very vividly Mm because I I can remember like not remembering this oh like when was I when this was happening like nobody told me that this happened at night like what yeah I feel you I feel you and my mom was taking care of it so but um this time oh and I should say my my fiance now who was not even my boyfriend then he was still in the military he had planned to make it to the birth but you know babies come when they want to come so she came a week early so he Mm. he he wasn't there at the birth which was a different another difference in that labor versus this past labor um and so when we come to this labor my mom she couldn't make it because my sister and I were pregnant at the same time. So we were pretty much wow. at the same time. And because she was at my my first water birth at home, she wanted to be at my sister's first water birth at home, which wow. was the last birth that she had. Yeah. And um, so I was at peace with that. Like I've done it before. I have mom here with me. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you have her this time. And, this time, um, sister. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, um, that's good. Yeah, it was great. And this time my now fiance was here for the birth, which was in oh my fiance was here. Um the the whole setting was just a little bit different even like my midwife and doula situation I love my midwife and doula in South Dakota but this setting for this birth was just far more intimate than Mm. the first 
Yeah, and I think I'm I'm sure that that has to do with my my age and maturity in comparison from this time versus that time. I think gotcha. that um yeah, I think that just how I have been journeying through life and taking care of myself and evolving, I think that played a lot into just how this birth mm -hmm. out with the support, the amount of kind of letting go I did and just allowing like our doula, we were looking for a doula. It was quite difficult to find one. Our finances were not, we weren't like in a, a surplus so it was it was a lot of factors that were like maybe we'll have a doula hopefully we'll have a doula and the way that we we met our doula after we just kind of let go instead mm -hmm. of being being obsessed or worried about whether or not we would have one she just showed up at my midwife's office she was working with my midwife and mm. she was the perfect fit for us and she gave us a great discount like she wanted to be at our birth she probably would have done it for free if we needed her to so it just the the intimacy in the environment mm -hmm. was more than i could have even imagined for this last birth so what's the name you said you had your last baby what's his name again adian adian Aiden. Aiden. Okay, cool, cool, cute. So with Aiden's doula, what's her name? You said she was in Florida, right? Yes. What's her name? Her name is Sayla. Say it again. Sayla. Sayla, that's pretty. Okay, yeah. and so what area is she in? She is in, she travels between Jacksonville, which mm -hmm. is about an hour out, in here in Daytona Beach. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Wow, an hour? That's not bad because if yeah. you have a mom in labor, I mean, it's rare. It's really rare that a lot will happen in that hour. So that's good. Right. That's good. I'm glad you're able to have her. Okay, so you had your experience with your midwife and your doula was different. Mm -hmm. Your at the atmosphere was far more intimate. Mm -hmm. And you had your mom at your first and you had your fiance currently at your second. So how did your body respond different, differently being 22 and 26? I know you mentally were more mature, but our body was also more developed as well. So from 22 to 26, how did your body respond differently um for both home um the different what's the difference in your body's response and postpartum mm -hmm. oh okay yeah this last one for sure was tougher <laughs> even mm. though I had done it before this one was a different experience so uh, my body alone in the labor and even pregnancy I felt this pregnancy a lot quicker because my body kind of already was aware of what was going on and how mm -hmm. to how to maneuver so I felt it a lot sooner just in different parts of my body the levels of discomfort they came on a lot faster and mm -hmm. so they last a lot longer because mm -hmm. yeah and um but with the the labor let's see the first pregnancy yeah I feel like maybe it's just like the universe's way of <laughs> giving it to you in doses because the mm. first one it, although it was it was brand new it was more more bearable and I think that that okay. was like showing me some grace because like this this is her first time <laughs> like <laughs> don't 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 make it too tough but um this last one if i'm the i don't think the labor was quite as long but to 
say that I understood better what to expect from my body in mm-hmm. the baby. Um, it still felt like a long time. We had mm-hmm. this time I had like uh, it called false or pre labor. Yep. Yep. Um, where the contractions were coming on. Um, and they were starting to get closer together, but at one point they just kind of stopped. Mm, yeah, I know about those. Yeah, and it was like because they had never really regulated. They were mm. happening a little bit more frequently, mm-hmm. but they were still like maybe, maybe a few, three or four contractions were happening every fifteen minutes, and then thirty minutes would go by, or fifty minutes would go by with nothing, and then another one. So it was really sporadic, and so I was getting excited, and then I was like, okay, so let's yeah, just let's yeah. Go. It should be happening soon, but my midwife, she was saying how sometimes like labor won't start for days or even like a, a week or two after, after yeah. that. You know, that's, a yeah. lot. that's a lot for your body to go through. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. For the baby to not even be coming in that moment. But luckily the contractions picked back up like that night, maybe like like midnight or one in the morning they came mm-hmm. back and from there from there they were um they were they were here to stay and we had the baby I guess it was probably like six or seven a.m I used to know the time I don't remember <laughs> listen there's no shame honey there's no mom guilt here I don't even know how many years my kids are apart okay how many months they'd be like 28 months I don't know that I don't know so don't don't take the mom guilt it's all right if you don't know sister it's okay yeah yeah so I can also remember the first labor with my daughter Mm -hmm. there was a point where I fell asleep I've heard people like say you you black out during that transition. Wow. Okay. Transition, but this one, I felt the transition. I and we live right next door to the hospital, and in my mind, it was like we're right next door to the hospital. Like we can we can shut this thing down and go mm-hmm. across the street and be okay. Mm-hmm. But I knew that because. Ooh, because I knew that it was a transition, I knew that pretty soon I would be pushing and it would be over. And I kind of rather stay in the atmosphere we created mm-hmm. than have to, during labor, pack up, get in the car. And even though it's right next door, it's like, that's a lot. I have to go downstairs. Like, I'm going to just stay here and try to try to thug it out until it's time to start pushing. And luckily I she only checked me once that's another difference my um first labor she checked me as as I wanted Mm -hmm. but that time I wanted to be checked more I guess because I was probably um eager to see like where are we where where are we with everything like when is it going to be time to start pushing but this time I she didn't check me until I was already like nine and a half centimeters and I was like let's go yeah let's go it's like put the fire under you Mm -hmm. it was like all right like we're basically done the baby is here at this point pretty much so not too much not too much more work to do for Mm -hmm. this phase and um pushing was very easy pushing was pretty easy the first time too but the first time I tore the second time I didn't which was okay it made me feel even better like that's um, good yeah whoo I'm having flashbacks <laughs> I'm having flashbacks for you okay I'm like oh Jesus so fresh yeah it's only been six months <laughs> listen even talking about when I think about having my twins like seven years ago, I'd be like, "Ooh, my lord!" But 
the good recovery is real, honey. But yeah, so I love how you were able to confidently, like it's like at 22, you knew your body. And then at 26, it's like your body's like, let's change this up a little bit, honey. Let's let's change it up. So I thought that was pretty interesting how our bodies work at different ages. But it's great that you did not tear when you had your boy, but you did tear your for your first child. It's it's interesting how our bodies, how our bodies. Uh, are so I really love I really I'm very glad that you have shared your story as far as being in the military and going forward having your baby in South Dakota then going forward and having your second baby in Florida seeing how midwives and doulas are different it's just so interesting and seeing how military insurance and Medicaid are different it's so interesting it's, it makes me want to think like, man, I should try this again. And then I'm like, no, no. So, so I, 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 um, I applaud you for your willingness to share. I applaud you for your um, willingness and desire to get it, to do what you want to do. What I mean is to think about you. You got out of the military. You thought that was best for you and your baby. And from what I see and from what I hear, you guys are still uh, moving along in life pretty well. So, so thank you again for sharing. But before we go, that precious baby. Hey, oh, he's, so, he's so cute. Listen, if you are listening to the podcast, we want you to go to YouTube and look at Aiden. Look at his little cute self. Hey, buddy. Hey, we enjoyed having you. He's ah, so cute. Oh, little cheeks. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. Let me focus. But yes, um, if you could share an encouraging word with a mom that maybe kind of in your situation in the military trying to think about what they want to do if they stay in or stay out and and or if they are a mom that's pregnant or a mom that someone that is not pregnant yet but considering doing a home birth what kind of encouraging words would you give them so let's start with if they were if they're in the military thinking about having a baby or if they're pregnant already what well how would you encourage this mom okay yeah, so if you're in the military, what served me best was sticking to the initial commitment that I made, um, regardless of the circumstances. So quick, quick tangent, when I first got in, I had a superior who made a comment along the lines of, he asked if I was going to do 20. That's what they always ask. Like, are you going to stay in until you retire? And I said, no. And I said, I was going to only do my enlistment, which was the six years. And he made a comment that things happen. And he gestured at his belly as if, if you get pregnant or when you get pregnant, that's going to change. Mm. And so that kind of, it honestly gave me, even stronger of a desire to like do what I said I was going to do and then use it as a stepping stone to move forward in my life so I think that if you are in the military and you want to have children based on your initial desire unless you want to stay in if you want to stay in then you should stay in because that's what's going to serve you the best but right 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 then then there one percent of the population is in the military which means that the other 99 percent is finding a way to make it happen for themselves Mm -hmm. without having to depend on the military so it's not like just because things are easier um, and more convenient sometimes in the military mm-hmm. that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that that's the only way and it doesn't mean that it's the best way so 
if you don't want to stay in, then you do not have to stay in just because you had a child. It, it's going to pull more out of you if you follow what you want to do and you make it work that way. It's going to require more of you and it's going to stretch you and it's going to help you grow and be stronger. I love it. I love it. Now, if there is a mom, that's great advice, actually. If there is a mom that is considering or if there is someone um, a woman that is not pregnant just yet, but thinking like, should I do hospital? Should I do home? Like, what would you, what would you, how would you encourage them? Yeah. So I would say that home birth is how it was done for many, many, many years. It's home birth with maybe an elder around a doula, some sort of support uh, usually women, not men, no offense, men, but y'all aren't having babies. <laughs> so this is, this is how it was done in our earlier times before the healthcare industry became such a big part of labor and delivery. So mm -hmm. that's one thing to consider the, maybe not your mom, but maybe your grandmother or the mother before her and mothers before them were having their babies at home with minimal interventions unless it was absolutely necessary. And so I think that's just something to take into account because you can do it. Like we, our bodies are, are fashioned in a way to be able to give birth to a baby. And um, sometimes there's a lot of like stories around labor and delivery everybody has their own different experiences but I think that that's something else to take into account that every experience is different and just because someone else may have had um, a not so desirable experiment doesn't mean that you have to do something different from what you want out of fear of having mm an experience that that doesn't go well of course consult your doctor there are some situations where you should have your baby in the hospital right 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 you have that, those interventions available if they're necessary but if your pregnancy is low risk then there's usually no reason why you can't do a home birth or a water birth or whatever you want your birth to look like it's just mm. it requires research going in knowledgeable about what you're doing just like with anything else um but just i would say eliminate the fear anything that you see or hear that does not align with the experience you want mm -hmm. i this, i shut it down or i close like myself off to it if somebody if i could tell that they were going to maybe discourage me from doing what I wanted to do or sharing why they quote unquote couldn't do what it is I'm saying then I would take it with a very tiny grain of salt and allow people to engage with me who were saying things that aligned with what I wanted because the mind can go some places depending on what you allow in so I think just align yourself with what you want. Study the information, be in community with people who are going to encourage and support you. And that way, when the time comes, you will already feel strong and affirmed enough to, to do and follow through with what you want to do. It makes sense because every, you're right. Every mom's story is very different, whether in the hospital or in the home or the same or whatever. Every mom's story, but every mom's pregnancy, every mom's risk, every mom's situation is very different. So yes, I agree. If you feel like you can do home birth, I think you should do it. If your doctor says, yeah, um, there's no issues, I think you should do it. But if you need to go to the hospital, if that's necessary for you and that's or that's the path you want to take, Fine. If you want to get an epidural, that's cool too. It's just, uh, we just, we are here to encourage moms to do what they feel like they can do, to do what you feel like you can do, um, ladies. So don't feel pressure from anybody. 
to do it. Don't feel pressure from us. You go do what you feel like you can do. Um, and what you desire to do, just like you said, what I love, what I love is that your story is you went all the way through and you had a successful birth um, for your babies. And it was great. And then you have me. I definitely tried to do a home birth. I was like, yeah, let's do it. We get to eight centimeters. That transition hit. I didn't register that it was a transition. And I was like, it's trying to it's time to transition to the hospital. And so that's kind of how my story went. Do I think about it like, man, Shanika, you could have this and you could have that, but I can't go backwards. And my baby is healthy and things, things, things went well. And so it, everybody's story is different. I had a great, I, I see, I experienced a little bit of what you experienced, but I, did I experience it in its totality? No, but, it, but I love that there's no judgment here. Like we cool, like. I'm not, she's not better than me because she having her baby at home and I'm not better than her because I had an epidural and I had no pain. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's no difference here. We just had our babies the way we wanted and the way we felt was necessary. So ladies, and if you're a mom or not, just do what's best for you, whether you are in the military or not, make a decision for you and your family and um, go from there. But we are so thankful for you and we um, appreciate you for sharing your story. Um, this is definitely a story that has inspired me and I know has inspired others. So thank you, thank you, thank you again for being a part of the OBM podcast. Thank you for having me. For sure, for sure. Girl, take care. And everybody, please wait and get ready for the next episode of the OBM podcast coming soon. All right, girl. Thanks again. We appreciate you. And we will talk to you later. All right? All right. Thank you. Right. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the OBM podcast. We look forward to you joining us next week to hear a story from a mom near you. So until we hear each other again, please be sure to take it easy, be blessed, and smile. Remember, you can enjoy life.